hopefully you guys can hear me because I'm wearing a mask, you know? Yeah. And take it off so you can hear me. Hey guys, so as we told you, um, this week is um, Child Passenger Safety Week. We are here with Warren from Mama Magic and we're going to learn a lot to do with car seat. So you need to know which car seat is right for your child and um, how to strap your baby. So Warren, can you tell us? Guys, it's so oh. good to be with you. I'm going to take off my mask because uh, we have converted this space into uh, a studio so we can observe all child support, so we're all safe now. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's exciting because it is Child Passenger Safety Week. Mm -hmm. uh, we've chatted so much between, the, between us about you know, being, being parents and looking at stuff like this. And I think I'm so excited now because we know that this is important and it's something for all parents. And I think as first time parents, how important is putting Nolan into a car seat? What are your thought processes? What is that, I mean, what is that first drive home like? Um, I know for me as a father, it was like a nerve wracking did I get it right? But how, yeah. how important is you know being safe in a car? Yeah. I mean, it's the most precious cargo that you can carry, isn't it? So, um, yeah, it's super important. And um, especially in South Africa, where uh, the roads are sometimes a bit dangerous and you need to really be careful, um, mm -hmm. you know, having a proper, uh, proper, proper car seat and is really important for us. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, it is Child Passenger Safety Week, and I think, um, you know, before this, we got a lot of questions on some of the videos and stuff that you've done for Mama Magic about what moms and them are asking, what's the right thing to do? How do we know what, how to choose a car seat? So we've come out to uh, this uh, customer center brought to by Maxi Cozy just to look at some options about do, doing that. You're the perfect example because uh, we know that Nolan is looking and in need of a new car seat, so you need some tips on how to choose the right car seat. A lot of you moms out there have sent in some questions, so we're going to be addressing those questions throughout today's live. If you've got any questions, you can drop them up there, and uh, I will ask them from behind the camera. Um, but I'm now going to hand you over to Mohammed, and he's going to take you through some of the, the details and specs of what to look out for on Child Passenger Safety Week. Enjoy! Okay. Hey, good afternoon. Nice to meet you guys. Always excited to see nice parents wanting a whole bunch of information on child safety. Yeah. And I'm kind of going to take you to the process of what you should be looking for in terms of Nolan, mm -hmm. but also to provide you a broad overview of what Child Passenger Safety Week is about and what we're trying to highlight. So a lot of parents out there that have information is to, why should I firstly get my child into a car seat? Mm -hmm. And what are the values behind it? So typically to explain to you who why your child needs to be in a car seat is when we're traveling, we are putting our car with something for a safety belt. Yeah. Okay, and if we look at a car seat or car environment currently, what we find is there's nothing actually keeping your child back in terms of a collision. So your child is small, they're not accommodated to the seat, and the most important factor that anybody will want to know, and I'm going to tell you off, off from now, your little one's five months old. Yeah. You can think of your car too. Up until nine years old. And how does that impact to it? So, if you look at a car in the car environment that's been designed, you normally have a seat belt like this, which is there that keeps us as dead our passengers in. But those seat belts are typically only designed to work for people that are more than 1.35 meters in height. So, on average, a nine year old will probably be requiring something to prevent him from actually being hurt by the seat belt and actually going through it. So vitally and most importantly, our first aspect that's to prove balance is to tell you what you're looking at now is something that's probably going to be utilized in your vehicle for up to your child's five nine years old. Okay, so we'll kind of go through your scenario and I'm going to ask you a bit of questions. Um, we'd like to firstly start off with, I'd like to show you this particular car here. So if I may ask you, what are you currently using in your car to take Nolan around at this moment in time? Are you using a child safety device as such? Yeah, okay. we have a car seat. All right, that. so you're you car chair currently for baby, and I'm happy that you brought it up, mm -hmm. is that car chairs, when they work, you work according to HSPs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So typically Nolan is five months old right now. Yeah. And if we look at Nolan's structure, his head is heavier than the rest of his body. Why, how do we pick that up? Is that you always find that when you're carrying Nolan, you're almost assisting his head. All the time. His head will be heavier than the rest of his body up until about probably 15 months of age. Because that's when your body starts getting into proportion. And what you want to know about 15 months 
Is this picture of the my hotel? It's probably the one lying around going all over. <laughs> okay. Okay, yes. It's now getting it. And up until that point, his head, neck, and spine are not strong enough to be able to hold his whole head up. Yeah. And hence, you're always going to be supported. So a child that's actually currently walking is probably got head, neck, and spine that's capable of dealing with that. Now, why is that important? At five months old, we are not capable of facing your nose in a forward facing direction at all. Because, as we know, when we're sitting in a vehicle and we're driving, and that's our passenger seat, and I'm driving, I've got my seatbelt running across me here. And what actually happens is a collision basically results in us all going forward. As adults, not strapped in the car, having a normal seatbelt, we suffer severe consequences from the damage. Our seatbelts hold us back. Now take a five month old, or take a child under 15 months. All the energy goes to the top of the head and basically causes serious head, neck, and spinal injuries. So up until a minimum of 15 months, your child, or Nolan in this case, will not face forward facing. We're gonna need to keep him rearward facing. So that's something that's really important. So when selecting a car chair, we have three different categories. First being a child up until 15 months, then he's walking around, scooting around, and moving around. And then we have what we call a toddler. A toddler is basically a child that's now active, who wants to be in a car chair, now is capable of facing forward facing, requires a five-point safety harness to keep them, but here is a child that needs to be sleeping off. So when we spoke, or we'll speak about it, we'll talk about comfort level. How far can the child sleep? Because they'll be spending a lot of time sleeping during that time. Mm -hmm. And then comes the kid, which we're probably looking around from four years up until the nine years. Mm -hmm. Now, very much or very relevant to us is the simple questions that I need to ask you. So we say, now that is five months old, how many kilos does he weigh? 6.7. Okay, so he's within the average, and he should probably be in a height around somewhere around 70 centimeters. Yep. Yeah. Now, those are your three main factors to consider when purchasing a car seat in order to put yourself in groups. And the reason is very simple. When I started off, I said to you, you need to be a certain height before you can actually utilize your seatbelt. Likewise, in your car chair right now, this car chair, your child will outgrow by height first. Okay? Before. He's going to get to the top of this car chair and you're going to go, oh no, this is not the right thing. He needs the next stage car chair until you can kind of come to us and ask us, well, what do I do from here? So knowing your child's height is going to be very important. No, now at the high point where we still need to keep him real facing because we want to make sure he's below 80 centimeters. He's still five months, he's still far too young to be going forward facing. So when we're going to look at our options, we're going to consider going into a real facing culture. At what age do like, a child have to have, like, um, to outgrow this, this okay. small? So on average, you'd find that a small a culture like this, anything from a year up to 15 months. So on average, you'll find that after a year, kids will outgrow this. So you might find that currently, no, they may be taller than the average, okay, yeah. which is more important. But he's still re required to be in a real facing direction, purely because his physique doesn't allow him to deal with what that's going to forward face. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to come into. Very importantly, with regards to the culture, is your usage and installation. So my next question to you. And we all are different, we all have different vehicles, and we all can kind of learn how does this thing hold down, and what's it going to involve, what's the world going to be like. Mm -hmm. okay. So currently, um, if I may ask what vehicle are you moving around with? It's a Fiesta. Fiesta. Ford, okay, Fiesta. perfect. So if I look at a Ford Fiesta, look at any other vehicle that we've got, a minimum of each one of them we've got is in a safety belt. Yeah. So car chairs are generally installed by two mediums. It's a safety belt. And then what we refer to as isofix brackets. Yes. So if you see down here, these are little metal brackets that are built into your car, and you'll bring a European model Ford Fiesta that has got the isofix brackets. Yeah. It's perfect. We've got the next stage, which is now ideally installation for whatever car chair you mentioned. You've got two options. Okay. Let me show you the difference between when we term isofix and when we term a seatbelt. So I'm going to just ask you to shift a little bit around on that side. Okay. Okay, a seatbelt installation. Typical seatbelt installation. These car chairs are made such that when you're installing them, you're capable of routing your seatbelt around the car chair, into the buckle, and then finally in here. So all car chairs like these 
are basically capable of being installed according to a certain value using C plus. Mm -hmm. You need to look for things like the guides that indicate you where this should be, and in this case, you'll find that they're blue, which are generic of all car chairs. Okay, that's my car chair. I want to test if my car chair is working perfectly fine in terms of installation. Remember, I'm driving in this direction. You should have a collision of brakes really if we walk on in that direction. So ideally, you want to check that your car is capable of not moving in that direction. Okay, yeah, that's not going in the right deal. Specifically when you've got smaller car chairs like these, we carry car chairs, you need to always ensure that the tangle bar is in the upright position. This part of the manufacturing guidelines and the testing that also works as a safety device. Taking the car chair out, and these are mobile solutions, so they're capable of fitting into your stroller, which is most of what carry car chairs are. The seatbelt does this. Okay, and you can take it out. Yeah. Now, here's the part where I tell you how to do parents. <laughs> so, <laughs> I've been doing this and I've been doing this for a lengthy period of time. I know we're going to keep it probably with my eyes closed. I've got now a sleeping child in here that's crying, and I'm kind of rushing it off. And I now need to get my child in, and I do this, and I kind of look for the buckle. Remember, I'm not in a car environment at the moment, so I've got all the space. I kind of bump my head, and I kind of look for the buckle in, and I pull, and I try to get it across. And I do all sorts of things like this, which is part of normal parenting, believe you me. Because it's a typical day with a kid, it can be daunting, and you kind of go, Okay, I'm done. If you've not done this installation exactly like the manufacturers have guided you to do so, and you eliminate any one component, the car chair will then be run as an unimportant or unsafe. Mm -hmm. So hence from that, they develop what they call isofix installations. And isofix installations simplify the task of installing your car chair and completely eliminate what we refer to as human error. Isofix spaces, or cartridges that come with isofix, typically have these little long lengthy brackets mm -hmm. that are going to now extend into your isofix hooks. Yeah. They all vary according to different cost of manufacturers, but they have the same purpose. So, what we do as an installation, we have our isofix bracket, it locks in onto either side, and we kind of hear a click. Okay. Here's that goes in, we kind of make sure it's nice and firm. We take a support leg and then we lock it down. And that now becomes part of the vehicle via the isofix installation, sitting nice and firm. Yeah. We now go to normal parenting. Go from here, take the watch. And you're still sleeping. I'm still sleeping. <laughs> We've had indicators in front that are telling me that I can reach. Come on, most parties. Yeah. Letting you know, hey. I'm a parent, thumbs up for myself, I've done this great mm -hmm. Should I have a collision? <laughs> Everything's working perfectly fine. I've provided for the manufacturing and such. And that is exceptionally vital. Okay, so the main purpose or main difference between seatbelt hooking, which is what I went over, and an isofix installation is that isofix installations, first they are a lot more rigid. Okay, they are adapt to more variety of vehicles, and most definitely and importantly, that they completely remove human error, which could be part of our daily task to install one of those cartridges. Now, I've covered now your age category. We kind of know where you are. Yeah. We've covered installation and we've identified that you've got both forms of installation. It's now kind of working out what works with your lifestyle. Because that's a very, very important thing. If you're a person that actually frequents moving in and out of your car, you probably want to find a cartridge that works with you easy. If you're going to be five or ten times more of your car every day, picking up and moving around with your child, you want to find automated systems. I commonly refer to the same as a vehicle with central locking with main locking. Yeah. If you're in and out of your car, you want to get in quickly, press the button and you go over. It's the same like electric windows. So hence, cartridges have started to develop in such a way that they want to make cartridges across different varieties with easier handling of your child happens. And they have automated harnessing systems what we refer to as stroller chairs. So, if you illustrate that, I'm going to bring you over to that side there. Okay, so you guys can have a look at this one. Okay, so firstly, 
What do we want to establish? Is the grouping of the colors. This is cute. This is really nice. <laughs> and we want to know that if this is going to work for Nolan, he needs to be here with us. We know that he needs to be in this car chair up until 15 months of age in a new replacing direction. Mm -hmm. We also want to make sure that we don't want to buy a car chair now that's just going to stop at 15 months and move over. We want to be able to take this car chair and accommodate him to the next stage. So this is what we refer to as a market for car chair, where he covers the 15 month category up until the age he's four years old. So typically, in your vehicle, we've got isofix connectors like these. We're going to take the isofix connector we're going to run it in and lock them in the other side. Okay? Shut that one. There. And the nice and firm. Got a support leg here. And it goes down. So there's no leg in his car chip. This being different from what you currently have, because your current one is portable. This remains in the car, but because it's now bigger, we want to know how we're going to get into it. Mm -hmm. So this one doesn't come off the... It remains on its base, but provides you the option uh, of not oh, nice. moving it from the side. So you would open your door on that side, he would be swivel, he'd be placed in there. Because he's five months old and you need to keep him there with place for 15 months, you can mm -hmm. back, have a clean indicator letting us know everything is fine. Mm -hmm. We know our child's going to be like accommodated for you that. As now it's going to get a little bigger, we're going to want to expand this car chip to be able to use for all the way up until three and a half or four years old. And we now have that option. Okay. At the same time, if you start using it off, not only requires extra support for his actual bed, for his back. Sure. So he requires a lot more support for himself, but as he grows, he starts developing. Good back, neck, and spinal muscles. We'll start removing the baby bits. Mm -hmm. Okay. At and what age would you recommend that one be? So ideally, that would be anything from six months to nine months, depending on how your child's sitting up. So as soon as your child starts sitting up, yeah. he's now displaying muscles that are fusing in the back, yeah. and he now can deal with support issues and we remove that. So it could be mm -hmm. anything between six and nine months. When you would be forward facing in this direction, you can see now because it's a lot more orientated. If you're being forward facing, all you want to do later on is just grow the car chair with him. Mm. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's okay. nice. Okay, so in terms of where we're turning or referring to car chair, we're referring to a car chair now which we call a multi car chair. It comes two categories. This particular one can be used from you, but you've already had a car chair. However, he still needs to be the old facing, so we can kind of use this here and then go forward facing a lot later. I'm going to take you back again onto the other side here to show you another car chair. It's now referred to the two-way car. So your child will have your base installed, your isofix is simple, and your child will probably be going through the categories. We also have Again, from a features point of view, look at certain features. An automated harnessing system. Mm -hmm. Okay, an automated harnessing system is something that actually ensures that when you're getting your little one in, it eliminates twists, buckles, yeah. crunching, and it's something that provides easy usage. Now, why am I explicitly showing you the differences between the features? They are all adaptable differently. If you've got a vehicle like an SUV that's slightly higher up, you're going to consider that for me to get my child into the vehicle at five months old, and I'm slightly lower down, I'm going to have difficulty keep picking him up and getting him in. Hence, I'll take a car chair that then swivels and fits in. Okay? If I need to keep him there, we place him in this car chair. It's not possible. It works in. Okay? And it's going to function exactly the same as that. Okay. Both of these car chairs have an additional feature to it in terms of talking on a genetic basis, we have what they call extended airway facing. Mm -hmm. Extended airway facing is a concept that says, for as long as we can keep a child airway facing, compared to the direction of travel, mm -hmm. the better. Because at 15 months, that's the minimum requirement we want to do. But if we feel that we want to keep our child airway facing for a little bit longer, some of these cultures have the compatibility to be able to do those two. And that's something that people look for as well. How is that also influencing your factors of your choice? 
If you are utilizing it for a long period of time, you're doing long distance travel, you're traveling at high speeds, and you know that your situation is not just quick in and out, you want to go for something with maximum safety to ensure that when you're doing a long distance travel, predominantly most of your travel is going to be in excess of 100 kilometers per hour. Should you possibly have a collision, you want the maximum factors to work. So sometimes we'll find that your dad is vehicles. You've got the dad who's got a particular car chair and he's gone for all the full-out maximum safety. You've got a car chair for mom that's going to be a lot more easier to go in and out. So factoring those couple of things in are going to be really important mm -hmm. when actually looking into your car chair. Finally, I just want to tell you where we're heading to and how your child's going to be adapting to the different car chair in terms of dropping. So remember I said to you, this is going to be a bit weird, I'm going to look for a little bit of space. <laughs> but to explain to you and parents why a seatbelt is really important. So particularly from three years old, a lot of parents negate the fact that they actually need a car chair. And they kind of go, I'm done. That's fine. I don't need this big thing. Okay, when I sit in a car and I grab my seatbelt and I run it across me, my seatbelt sits like this, sits on my shoulder, and it sits on either side of my head. And this is also very important for adults. Because when you're sitting in your vehicle and you're sitting like this, in the case of a collision, you can't go forward, but a lot of the forces are exerted already for you. Mm. Now, what do we find parents do? Stop that. Okay. So one, there's absolutely nothing keeping me back, and it goes. Alternatively, if your child is not more than 1.35 meters in height, okay, it kind of almost sitting with the seatbelt. It sits here. Mm. If your child is sitting currently in your vehicle and his seatbelt is running across the abdomen, that is exceptionally dangerous because that's what causes rupture in the abdomen mm. and the seatbelt itself cuts across the neck and causes that. So, again, it's very important that we know that this stage of culture is something you should not be eliminated. No one may not be there, but it's something we can also then factor when I show you cultures that go across party groups. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the purpose of this culture finally would then be for the seat algorithm to be properly guided that actually sits across the neck of the child and sits on either side of the head. Mm -hmm. after. And this one, you don't have to clip this one on to the eye, so... So ideally on this particular culture, you want your eyes open. Oh, you can add that option. Okay. Or you just look into boot. Yeah. So, I'm not being out of the talking. What I want to try to do right now is give you an idea because there's tons of questions you're going to need to ask me. Mm -hmm. And there's questions that you want to know about regarding knowledge and why cultures are going to be important and what can you eliminate. Because we want to make sure that people are educated as to understanding. We now understand that your culture is based number one on the child's age based on your child's height. It's going to be based on what you do daily. Mm -hmm. We understand that having a culture is really important. But very importantly is normal safety tips and what we can do in terms of making a culture. So ideally my recommendation in terms of what you do is find out to work home with a maker mm -hmm. that has a face. Yeah. What do we have on this one of your couch? Multiple cartridges like these will tell you that they can go from one year all the way to nine years old. Okay. Okay. And so is that one, what age is that? So this would be ideally from a four year old, mm -hmm. height of about 105 centimeters, up until about a nine year old. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Something like this would be something that we refer to as from about 15 months all the way to nine years. Wow. Okay. 15 months. We are not talking forward facing. Yeah. Okay, so we're going in there, got a five point safety harness, we've got necessary inlays. As he grows up, these harnesses are then removed, and these inlays are removed, and the culture then functions exactly the same as this one back there. Okay. That needs to be done out from the back as your child gets to four years old. Now, my question to you is to ask yourself, what will you be using it for? How often you'll be using it, and whether or not your child will basically be using one car chair over a nine year or a seven year period. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what is the commute going to be like? Because more than often, multi group car chairs such as these are recommended when you've got two kids to carry. Maybe you're dropping your one child off, he's three years old, and you quickly need to move over to the next child 
in this week, a process where you can simply adjust the headrest, clip off the harness, and move in. The problem we have with multi-group couches sometimes, and you need to consider, is that does this cater very well for a one-year-old or for a nine-year-old? Yeah. If you look at the structure of the couches, these are ideally for four to nine years old, and that's the structure. What do you miss a lot of? A lot out of this country. Mm. Okay. My question to you, Alicia, is when we refer to comfort, what are we looking for as a parent? What do you want to see when you, if I said to you, I've got a comfortable chair, mm -hmm. what do you want to see in a comfortable chair? The most important thing, especially for Nolan, he overheats, so I don't want him to feel too hot. That's the most important thing while he's in the car seat, because sometimes, like Indra and I love to travel, so we can be driving for like four hours, and I need him to be comfortable even when he's sleeping as well. So, yeah. So generally, what a lot of parents tend to do is kind of, if we work our comfort, we always kind of have to do this. Oh, wow. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, exactly. uh, yeah, touching. Really <laughs> touching, yeah. and we kind of do this. Yeah, true. Okay, and we go, oh, wow. That's comfy, yeah, true. <laughs> when we feel a blanket, it's comfy. It's mm, yeah. soft, yeah. but isn't it hot as well? So to balance the two and understand what comfort is, I want to explain to you utilizing this country itself. If we were to consider Nolan at five months old, okay, and you looked at this particular country as a mum, do you deem it to be comfortable now? Uh, you think it's not too comfortable? It's not too comfortable, exactly. Yeah. Because a lot of it's based on feel. My next question to you. But you can hear that, I, I mean, you can feel that this um, is comfortable. But it's definitely not as soft as you want it to be. Yeah. And we believe in you, know, mom, and you make five months old, or my baby to be something nice and soft. Sure. What I want to raise, and something that's very important to raise with regards to comfort levels, is that comfort for your child is not based on what they actually sit on. It's based on how much weight sits on the lower back of their spine. So, to give you a typical example, I'm currently standing, I've got weight sitting and resting across my body. Mm -hmm. If I was in the horizontal position, I'd be resting and would I not be comfortable? We all sleep horizontally because our weight is spread across the body. So, whenever we're looking for a culture, comfort will not be on what they set up, but it will be based on the amount of angle of the recline of your culture. Because when our couch is in an upright position like this, I have a lot of weight sitting on my lower back mm -hmm. on my spine. Yeah. And that's uncomfortable. Yeah. But the minute I'm here, I'm now a lot less weight. Mm -hmm. So typically, if you have to feel a car and you feel the chair, you find another chair, which is hard, firm, and durable, mm -hmm. and not as soft. Mm -hmm. Yet, if you recline the chair, you're comfortable. Yeah. So why couches of this nature may not necessarily always have padded inlays inside? is that this couch has a longer lifespan than what you're currently using in a smaller couch. You've got an eating kit. Child is drinking, it needs to be in and out of this couch, it climbs in, it does also stuff. So we need the materials to be a lot more durable. However, what we want to do is ensure that there's always a good recline. So what we need to do is ensure when we're looking for now and right now is one, you would face it, and two, most importantly, we want to find something that's very comfortable. I also want to raise something to you from a parent's perspective. Is that harnessing? Okay. Let's bring this around for you. So you can see. Your child grows. And we find that when we're looking at cultures like this, this is really never done by parents. Moving the hip Okay. Why is it exceptionally important? And I'm going to tell you this because whatever I'm going to show you, you're going to find out somewhere along the line now that's going to become what we call a beam. Okay? It's going to sit in there, you're going to put him in, and you're going to be driving, you're going to kind of see him doing that. Ta -da. Bye. But I call him strapped about fast. What happens is that a harness should always be at the right height setting. If a harness is too high up, it allows room for your child to be able to step out. If it is too low down, it sits in the lower end of the shoulder and also doesn't have the ability to curve. So, when any car is currently what you're using and what you're going to be looking at, the first thing you want to do is when putting your little one in, and we always encourage a perfect fit, is to ensure that the head wrists are adjusted accordingly, he's sitting at the right height, he's sitting nice and comfy, and he's basically organized himself accordingly. So, we would 
replacing and the first few months. Yeah. And use this collection all the way for four years. As a parent, you will always ensure that your harnesses are correctly adjusted and you've got the right instruction needed. Also looking into features and I'm sure you're kind of going, okay, now I've got too many choices <laughs> and which one works best for me. Mm -hmm. But ideally what you want to do is everybody's customized around the solution for yeah. themselves. You may find certain people might only have to see dollars of installation and scotches that work with them. Is there any specifics with regards to your little one that you feel that you need to cover? Um, I've got one question. I believe some of these seats have like um, an expiring date on them, right? So it only lasts a certain amount of time. On some of these chairs that last from 15 months to 9 months, is it, is it true? Do they expire at some point during that period that you might have to replace them? Or? So a culture does not expire. Okay. Other than, so we're going to add to this. Okay. A minute culture is involved in a collision that you know, we use okay, so sure. it has expired. Yeah. Does a culture have a shelf life? No. Okay. However, culture are not recommended to be used fast for more than 10 years. Okay. Oh, all right. The reason being is that you've always got sun beating down on them. You could have been in and out of the culture all the time. You cannot guarantee that those components were manufactured or will, will, will remain within its manufacturing process in terms of its safety after the 10 year period. So after okay. fuel culture for 10 years, that's it. And correct in saying so. Now my buying culture that says it goes forward for 12 years. What happens after 10 years? Yeah. And those are the things that you do need to question because okay. we normally recommend buying monocle cultures, which means you've been in there, you utilize your small culture, move up to the next stage. Typically, we have the tendency to believe for multiple cultures, oh well, send it, I'm done. Sort of, I don't need to buy a culture again. What happens when you have another kid? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. now you go, I've got to buy another sure. multiple culture. And if you look at it from a financial point of view, whatever else, when kids are there, you've got your small one in here. There's no one moves over to the next stage. And another kid comes into play. Mm -hmm. He then goes, or she goes into the first culture, yeah. and you've got him there. Mm -hmm. And move that way. But a monogram culture, it is much better for that specific age category mm -hmm. than what a multi group culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Any other things that we haven't covered? One of the ones we were talking about on the way here is well, what if we change cars at some point? Is it's there. The sitting car seat specifically made for sitting car? Okay, so Isofix is something that is now becoming common in all vehicles. It is an international standard on. Uh, an authority that is basically put it out there to ensure that Isofix will always be available. If you buy a culture that installs with the safety belt, although the installation fee would be a little bit more difficult, all cultures come with a seat belt, so you won't have an issue. Isofix, if you have got an Isofix culture and you are changing your culture, it's always best to check whether the new car has the Isofix or not, because you will find a specific situation which some vehicles may not have. But generally, all new vehicles that are coming out are coming with Isofix. Car seats are not specific. To cars, there's recommendations by manufacturers to say our culture works exceptionally well within that environment. We've tested the two together. Mm -hmm. In terms of testing and understanding that, are there any questions that you maybe feel that? I mean, I don't know. You just settle for what's out there. In terms of like, uh, have you heard in terms of what should you be looking for in terms of safety? Because remember, my culture is safety. My culture is kind of the best. Is there, is there ratings, like safety ratings, or how do you tell a good brand a so, good brand? Yeah, so very importantly is that globally, and especially all different countries, in Australia they probably have something, they have a different safety standards regulation. Mm -hmm. The United States has something different, Canada has something similar, and European countries have different. And it's very important, because you could be coming across from the state with your car and thinking, oh well, it's going to work in my car. Note that there are differences between the regulations. For example, typically in the States, they work with miles power, we work with Germans power, metric measurements are different. So even the instruction manual will be different. In the, in the States, they have what they call latch systems and not isofix. So it's slightly different. So if you are staying in Europe, or you are working, or you are in South Africa, like we are right now, we abide by the European Standards Convention. Most of the vehicles that we have are divided design according to European specifications. Hence, we ensure that all our cartridges are in line with the European standard specifications. Mm -hmm. There's two different types of specifications within them. There's one called ECE, 
is one of those isomers. Okay. ECE has been around for a long time, we utilize seat belts, and the measure of testing that they've done in there was limited to the a minimum. That is, that is the UK country at a speed of close to about 40 or 40, 60 k's per hour, and that is about it. They never did side impact testing. Why? We need to come, they need countries to get into the market. They've now developed ISI as a higher level of safety standards. ISI starts testing, side impact, crash testing, starts giving parents a lot more features on the country than elimination now, because that is the largest cause. And I must be explicit in saying to you, although we can recommend a great country for you, it becomes very important as you as the parent understanding, keeping your child in the correct position. It becomes very really important to ensure that your child's always buckle up. So familiarizing yourself with, okay, I'm not kind of going to college and the regulations and the good. He's in a real place in the age. Familiarizing with how easy it is for you to use these type of things in this position. Going to be exceptionally important. Because a college not correct in school doesn't have to its purpose, even though it may have the highest standard. So looking for safety standards, it's not necessarily that you've got to go with the ISO safety standard or the EC standard. Go with what suits your environment, what type of travel you're going to be doing, what's easier for you, and how you're going to go around the safety of the country itself. So not all seats have both of those safety accreditation? No, so you'll find that the cultures will be specific to a safety standard regulation, and that will be based on what we do. Yeah. But what you want to look for is anything if you're in, if you're in South Africa, yeah. all cultures that are to European standard specification are the cultures to look after. Okay. Okay. That's good. Mm -hmm. I see you are a monkey Yeah, that was that was really great, my mate. Thanks, Harvard. Um Did you guys learn a lot? Yeah. A lot. Yeah. A lot. <laughs> so I, I, I think wow. I think I mean you know, as a parent myself, I've got a three-year-old and a six-year-old. I learned a lot more even about the need to ensure that my kids remain in car seats at that age. Yeah. And I think even like you say, choosing car seats, what to choose, what's the right thing. I think that idea of a look and feel on a car seat is always important. You, you want it to look nice, but I think I think Mama gave us some good tips about the safety elements that, that over, over jump that. And I think because car, the child passenger safety week, so important that you get the right tips on how to choose the right car seat. Um, and we had a lot of questions that came in, but I think most of them were answered through this process. I think a lot of them, were, the one particularly about the expiry dates of a car seat and, and that, that, that tenure being really important. So yeah, I hope you learned a lot. I definitely learned a lot. I'm sure all the viewers learned a lot. Um, and so thank you so, so much, guys. On a light on notes, let me ask you as a dad, yeah. as an experienced dad, um, what do you do to help the child to like being in the car seat? Because sometimes these babies cry. What, what tips can you give parents to just make them remain there? I think that, yeah, that's a really good question because it's, it's yeah. difficult. I think particularly, um, I think as parents you always feel challenged when they're in a rear-facing car seat. Yeah. You feel like, oh my gosh, there's nothing to look at. But actually, there's actually a better perspective of looking out than it is on, on the side when they're front-facing. Also, um, I think little things like this um, really do help a lot. The mirrors, yeah. they can see you, you can kind of see them. Yeah. Um, Toys, you get beautiful little clip arms and stuff that can entertain them. I mean, we had I don't even growing for my kids, my first son. We had a little toy that was clipped on the little giraffe, and you can't see bullets. And we just there was a little stuff that entertained him. And then I think like when my wife and I were in the car, she would sit in the back with him, and she was able to to facilitate and help him out. Yeah. I think the one thing we had to decide though was, which is I think the hardest decision as a parent is, when your child cries, what do you do to drive him? What do you do? Do you kind of give into this child crying, or do you kind of have to set the stand? And I think I think it was really difficult for us in the beginning, but we have to set the stand and say, I'm going to do as much as I can to entertain you, yeah. Yeah. but I'm not going to compromise your safety yeah. um, and and hold you on doing stuff like that. So I think it's hard, mm -hmm. but depending on your child, and I think the good thing is like if you find the right time to get out there. Um, I think you said it as well, like. You know, don't fall asleep. So I think that's that's kind of the good thing. And I think on, on long trips, it's just kind of like planning your time to when you're going to be when you're going to be getting the car so they can go so they can spend most of the time sleeping. And when you do, there is some really to entertain if they need that. You get on snackiness. You did lots of accessories to add in and around that will entertain them. So yeah. And expect that your journey will take twice as long. Guarantee it will take twice as long. <laughs> 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 so absolutely beautiful. So thank you so much, guys. Uh, I've learned a lot. I'm sure you've learned a lot.
Um, and I hope that all your viewers will continue to learn as much as we do. There's lots more content coming out from Maldish and Andrew, um, as well as from Mama Magic and the Child Passenger Safety Week pages. So stay tuned uh, and enjoy it for myself, Warren. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Bye. 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 That was great, thank you so much. Yeah.